It's been half a year since Hurricane Maria devastated Puerto Rico. Recovery for many of the island's residents has been tantalizingly slow. The University of Puerto Rico suffered serious damage, and with power cuts constant, the education system remains beleaguered. But as part of our ongoing initiative called Chasing the Dream, Poverty and Opportunity in America, we want to tell you about a new program at NYU, which is offering respite to 50 of their best and brightest students. Providing free tuition and housing for the spring semester. For journalism student Anna Garcia and political science student Ignangeli Salinas, much needed stability after a tumultuous six months. They recall the night the eye of the hurricane swept over the island. It was just so incredibly scary. We have glass doors. We were so scared that they were going to explode. My dad spent the whole night just holding on to those doors. He tried to even tie it to like our couch, um, but that didn't work, obviously. And they all, they all broke and all the water came in and it flooded the, that part of the house. Hurricane Maria slamming into the island and as you heard, one official saying the island is destroyed. The U.S. territory is a vast scene of wreckage. Officials there predict entire towns will have to be rebuilt. Maria's what I remember most is going outside and seeing just the destruction. The craziest part for me was the lines at the gasoline stations. These people have slept in their car overnight. This family right here, they've been in line since 9 a.m. yesterday morning. Nearly It was just hours. nuts. I mean, people were killing each other over gas. People were, you know, stealing the gas from the trucks. They actually, like, assaulted the drivers and everything. It was, it was crazy. You could just be in the line getting gas and someone could come and shoot you over it. Ignangeli was interning in Congress at the time and living in Washington. With Puerto Rico left in the dark and her family living in a remote part of the island, communication was impossible. I wouldn't hear my mother's voice in a week. Um, and just not knowing anything. Like the whole Puerto Rican diaspora was left in a state of chaos. Almost a week after Maria hit, some isolated towns still have not been heard from at all. It's in those places, cut off from the rest of the island and the world, where some fear the worst damage and loss of life. Your mind isn't anywhere else. Like, I would cry at anything, super sentimental. I would have to, like, leave my desk for a little bit, and, like, clean up the makeup, go back, and be okay. Almost a week after the hurricane passed, one of her friends was able to reach her family home. Her mother at the time stuck in a long gas line in the capital, San Juan. Her dad, at home, found safe and sound. The back of my house was a disaster, but it was just good to know, you know, that they were okay. And that just means everything after being so much time without any knowledge of your people you love. The University of Puerto Rico has 11 campuses spread across the island. All of them were crippled by the hurricane. The building where I take all of my communications classes, it was the worst one. It was completely destroyed because the roof, um, the water started coming in and destroyed all the computers, all the documents, everything. So many of my friends, like when they would speak about it, it'd be like you can see how devastated and how it had affected them. So I think this past year with the Puerto Rico's bankruptcy, um, the cuts to the university and Hurricane Maria, like a lot of pressure has been on the student population in specific. I don't know, it changes people. They're not as carefree as they used to be. You can see that they're more fearful and they're a lot more stressed. And, and that's sad and that's dangerous. During her congressional internship, Ignangeli witnessed the political battle ensue over hurricane relief funding. Earlier this year, Senate leaders folded disaster relief into a two-year budget deal, averting a government shutdown. But the package fell tens of billions of dollars short of what Puerto Rican officials requested. It's very unfair, I think, the way, the way Puerto Rico was treated. Like it does not have the economic nor political institutions to recover on its own. The federal government's response to Puerto Rico's tragedy and humanitarian crises has been inadequate, has been insufficient. And it's a very political thing because, for example, Puerto Ricans 
or at least Peruvian residents that live in the island, they can't vote for a Congress member. And that sense, politicians really don't feel that inclined or that responsible for providing aid to Puerto Rico because most probably they won't get the backlash. Now, I hate to tell you, Puerto Rico, but you've thrown our budget a little out of whack because we've spent a lot of money on Puerto Rico. I think the angriest I've ever been was when my mom called me and she's like, oh, I made a gigantic line today. I was like three hours in line and they gave me a bottle of water, a bar of her, like a Hershey bar and a can of Pringles. It's, it's just beyond like what people had to go through and how they were treated. Well, Congress decided what was physically, like fiscally responsible for them to help and what wasn't. So I just think it was barbaric. What do you think is most important for our viewers to know about the current situation in Puerto Rico? Right now, I think that like the word to describe Puerto Rico situations is instability. People right now, they have the lowest resources that they have. So many businesses were destroyed, so many houses were destroyed, and yet inflation prices are going up like crazy. And it's it's ridiculous how people are expected to live in these circumstances and be okay. People are still suffering, people still don't have power, some of them still don't have water, everyone's still, you know, in shock. Suicides in Puerto Rico have, you know, risen and that's something that's really scary and horrible. We try to push through and we're very, you know, we try to maintain our hopes and our happiness even though we go through, you know, these really hard times because um, that's, that's our spirit, that's who we are. Um, and I'm very proud of that. I'm, I'm very proud to be a Puerto Rican. To ensure Puerto Rico's universities are not negatively impacted, Anna, Ignangeli and the other students attending NYU at no cost are expected to pay their spring tuition to their home campus. But with the island's economy reeling and a university suffering, the question remains, what does the future and what does a career look like for Puerto Rico's youngest and brightest?